Hey there, fellows. Now I've got me this lovely car right here, which is gonna be subject to a bit of witchery. So walking by this thing, I noticed that it's missing a cap. It's gone. Where do you think it might have went? I mean the cap that covers the wheel bearing. You know, a lot of people drive around without these, with total disregard for whether the bearing is lubricated, and only when the steering wheel starts to bounce around and they feel that the car's handling is a bit off, or when they start hearing noise, only then do they decide to check on their wheel bearings. Now, I think this calls for an experiment. We'll have one bearing that's lubricated but pinched, the other one is gonna be completely dry, another will have dirt in the grease, and the idea is to work through several scenarios to see what sort of effect you get under different conditions. We'll be doing all of our testing at the test track, but in the meantime, we need to get to work. Let's do this. So have I got some good news for you fellows. Some cool new merch available on our website. Like, for example, these sweet signature hoodies. And the good news doesn't end there. The first 25 people to order these hoodies, we'll be offering them a 25% discount. And don't forget that there's a bunch of other stuff that you can order on our website. T-shirts, baseball caps, mugs, document holders. And we're offering some generous discounts on the entire lineup. And on top of any order you make, we'll throw in one of these stickers on the house. Don't miss your chance to get some merch at discount prices. Hit the link in the video description and grab yourself something. What happens when a wheel bearing seizes on the move? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here's what's going on, fellows. We have made it to the test track, where there is plenty of space to play around. Now, at the moment, the front left wheel... The wheel bearings are completely dry. You would have seen us washing out the grease and putting everything back together. We decided not to pinch it, we're just gonna leave it dry for now. As for the one on the right, well, it's lubricated. But there is one caveat, in that we've tightened it down with way too much force. Now, I've got the race logic in the car, so we're completely set. And the point of the experiment would be to see how long each side lasts. Will the bearing that's tightened to spec but completely dry give up first, or the one that's over-torqued but greased up? I've reset the race logic. And now I drive... I don't know, however long it takes, we'll see. One kilometer, two, three... I take it you can carry some decent speed through here, like 60 should be no problem. Oh, and let's take a baseline temperature reading, shall we? Before I've gotten out there and before we've done anything. Seems alright. 14 degrees Celsius. That's the one with no lube. And it's the same over here. Well, almost at 13.8. Here, you can be on temperature measuring duty. Okay, let's get right to it, start the car and get out there. This is a bit underwhelming. Cool, the engine is running. Here we go. Oh, this feels weird. Now we see if there will be a pull in either direction. The wheel isn't returning to center, but that's just the alignment. Well, so far it's going straight. Yep, it's going straight, and you want to know why? When I turn the wheel ever so slightly to the left or to the right, I get a slight pull in either direction, which seems to be caused by the alignment. We're doing 50, 60, fantastic. I'm gonna keep doing just that. Back and forth, flipping in one direction, then the other in order to... how do I say this right? to put an equal amount of stress onto both bearings. I can hear something squealing. 
Are we already done? After just 580 meters? Two and a half kilometers? Awesome. Three kilometers, 100 meters. 160. What's the temperature on the left? That's the one with no grease. How much? 51? It's barely even gotten warm. On the right? Oh, now that's pretty serious. It's already at 125 degrees. I'm off, now's no time to quit. So there you go, 125. Who would have thought? We were expecting... the exact opposite to happen. Oh, I can hear the one with no grease squealing. Eight and a half kilometers. And I take it I'm just a few dozens of meters away from pulling in to take another temperature reading. That's it. Just when I was thinking about going in to measure the temperature, the car can no longer drive. It's barely pulling in second. And we've got sparks. That would have done it. Can you measure the temperature real quick? It collapsed? Is it very crooked? That's 215. 215 degrees, my friends. It got up to 200, but wasn't it barely getting warm? I think I know why it wasn't getting hot. I have an idea. Turns out there was a bit of grease left, which is now burning. So it hasn't fallen apart yet, nor has it seized. I think we should finish the job. I've only gone 8,943 meters. Almost 9 kilometers on a bearing with no grease with an average speed of, let's call it 55 k's. Which isn't all that much. It'll last a few more. You think it'll go a few more kilometers? I don't think it will. Then again... 30 kilometers an hour, which is quite leisurely. On a bearing that was already chewed up. It was a pretty big hit, mind you. It felt like the wheel, and it's pulling to the left. Look at that, it's doing that on its own. I don't even need to turn the wheel. Oh wait, looks like it can do the same thing when turning right. The wheel must have leaned over and... Uh, let me check to make sure. The hotter it gets, the more it sticks. Which makes the steering increasingly heavier. Eh, no worries. Look, that's me just letting go of the wheel. You see what it's doing? There it is. Okay, second gear is letting me down. Something seems to have gone wrong. Let's go have a look. I think measuring the temperature is a bit moot. There's something burning in there, look. We are on fire. Do we have a fire extinguisher? Did you get the fire on film? Yeah, there's something burning in there. You can see the flame. Not anymore. It stopped? What was it, the grease or something? Let's have a look at the aftermath. Aside from something catching fire... Get back on there. It's not happening. What caught fire anyway? I'm guessing the grease. Now let's have a look at the other side. It's hot. Out of curiosity... What's the temperature? Doesn't seem like that much. 85 degrees. But here's the thing. When it's on tight, it does get hot and starts to expel the grease. It liquefied and now it's all over the rim. 
So it began to evacuate the wheel bearing. Why so? Well, the heat makes it all runny and drippy. If you keep it this way for a long period of time, well... It won't be long before this bearing does what that one just did. Let's go check on the other one again. Check this out, fellows. The bearing that wasn't lubricated, it was able to go for about 3 to 5 kilometers without even getting hot. But then things went south. The nut was locked, but that didn't keep it from detaching. At which point, the brake rotor was starting to get displaced relative to the hub. The brake caliper was keeping it in place, but then it overheated and fell apart leaving the wheel at a very unhealthy angle and seizing it in the process. So there you have it. Let's just say that it held up for 10.5 kilometers, which for a wheel bearing is nothing. It's supposed to last 100,000 Ks, not 10. Why don't we replace the hub and install a bearing that's all lubricated but has dirt in the grease? Which one is going to lose, too much torque or dirty lube? Well, let's find out. Let's take this from the top. On one hand, we have the super tight bearing, which has traveled 10,700 meters. On the other, one with some old grease, which is also contaminated with dirt and dust and whatever else you can find on the road. Let's do this. That's already 8.5 kilometers. And that bearing has gone for 10,700 meters on top of the 8.5 Ks I've just put on it. We'll let someone else have a go. Look at what's happening, fellas. In total, we've driven a good 50 kilometers, give or take. What's curious is that the bearings seem to take turns as in one gets up to 100, while the other barely gets up to 60 or 70. Then after a while you take another reading and it's the other way around, with the dirty and dusty one starting to overheat, while the over-tightened one ceases to. I just measured the temp again and this one got up to 115, while that one is at 70. What's amazing is that here you barely got any grease escaping from under the nut. Maybe a little bit came out, but it's definitely nothing serious. I do not see it coming out anymore. And you know what? This wheel, where we have the dirty bearing, it is way cooler than the other one, where you've got the one that's too tight. So there's your result. We've got the car on a jack and a... I see. I think there is no need for any further investigation. See what's happening? This is the tight one after it got really hot. Oh, the ball joint seems to be... Oh, wait, that's not it. The bushings are done. But the bearing is doing just fine. 
The dirt and sand have apparently been ground into fine dust, and as a result we don't seem to have any adverse effects. Ladas are just unbelievable, man. They are so good. So here... We got nothing. It did get hot, turning the dust into powder, but then it ceased to overheat. Over here the situation is just bad. Maybe we should try and see if we can tighten it some more? You know what? That's it. That's as far as it'll go. It appears that we've tightened the nut all the way to where the thread ends. Let's discuss what happened to the over-tightened bearings, fellas. Naturally, one fell apart as soon as we began taking the hub apart. The tiny balls have fallen out. At least they don't feel triangular. Interesting results we got with the tight bearings. One of them fell apart, while the other one is loose. That's weird. It's supposed to sit tightly on the spindle. But then it's pretty obvious that you shouldn't tighten the bearings with too much force. So there's the experiment, fellows, and, uh, well, the results are pretty curious, I'd say. In this type of situation, when you're driving without a cap protecting the bearing, well, it's quite obviously exposed. And you don't have a seal that's placed on the inside, so you really want that cap to be in place. That said, if you stuff in enough grease, as our experiment proves, you can actually drive around. And that's with us having gotten the bearing dirty on purpose. You got that... Not gonna say that word. Aren't Lada's just great? This one ate all of that up like it's nothing. I mean, we don't even have any play in the bearing. The bottom line is that even if you do lose the cap somewhere, say after driving through some mud you notice that it's gone, no need to panic. You really just need to make it to a repair shop. There you let them dismantle and clean everything, piece it back together, perhaps add some fresh grease, and you're free to continue driving. And that does it for this experiment, fellas. We lost one brake rotor, a couple of sets of wheel bearings, and that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, grab some merch. You'll find the links in the description. This hoodie has seen better days. But I use it for work anyway. Suggestions, comments, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later. Let's put sand in the rear diff next time.